Hey, and welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make these ice cubes rotate around any object in Blender 3D. I am using Blender 4.0 on a MacBook Pro, M1 chip, and 16 RAM. So in this video, I'm going to use my all-time soda can. You can download my 3D soda can models I made, link in the description, but you can also create your own soda can model or use other objects for this animation. But first, we're going to modeling the ice cube. We're going to make two different ice cubes. Let's start with the first one. So in a new blend file, press A to select all, then press X to delete it. So start with press shift plus A to add a cube. Go to modifier and add a subdivision surface. Make it simple and change both numbers to three. Also add a bevel and just leave it like this. Then add a displace modifier and drag it so it's over the bevel. Click on new and go to the texture and change the type to cloud. Change the size to 0.33. Go back to the modifier and change the strength to 0.5. Then right click and shade it smooth. Then add another subdivision surface and change the viewport to 2. Then press F2 to rename it to Ice Cube. And for Mac users like me, press FN first, then F2. Now we've a Ice Cube. Now apply the modifiers. So if we scale the Ice Cube, they are working properly. Then press H to hide it for now. Now for cube number two. So press shift plus A to add a cube. Press tab button to go to edit mode. So this is the tab button just right over the caps lock. Then right click and click on subdivide. Click on this thing over here and change the numbers of cuts to four. Then go to object mode by hitting the tab button. Go to the modifiers and add a bevel modifier and change the amount to 0 0.66 and then change the segments to three. Then right click and shade it smooth. Add a Displace modifier and click on New and then click over here and change the type to Voronoi and change the intensity to 0.22 and change the size to 0.11. Go back to the modifiers and change the mid-level to 0.119. Then add a subdivision surface and change the viewport to 2. Then press F2 to rename it to Ice Cube 2. Now apply the modifiers, so if we scale the ice cube, they are working properly. Then press H to hide it for now. And here we have two ice cubes. Let's make a material for it. But before we start, press Option plus H to unhide the object we just hided. Select both ice cubes. Then press S plus 0.1 to scale it down. And press on this symbol to change the view. And select View Selected. So go to the Render Settings. Go and change from EEV to Cycles. And if you have a GPU device, go and change to that for better rendering. Also change the max samples on the viewport to 64. And change the noise threshold to 0.1 so you can render faster. Also change the max samples on the render to 300. So go to Shadings. Select Ice Cube 1 and then click on New. And rename it to Ice. And then over here, press Z to switch shading and click on Render. Let's add some lights so we can see what we're actually doing. So press Shift plus A to add an area light. Press G plus Z to move it up on the Z axis. And then go to the light settings and change the power to 500 W. Press S plus 5 to scale it by 5. Then click on the Ice Cube 2 and press Shift plus Cube 2. And then press Control plus L to link the material. Now make sure both the ice cubes have the ice material. Now let's set up the HDRI. So go to World. Click on this yellow dot and select the environment texture. Click on Open and choose you HDRI image. In the description, I linked the HDRI I used, so download that. So go to the render settings, then unfold the film. And check the transparent, so we have the HDRI affected, but we can't see it in the viewport. Now back to the ice material. Press Shift plus A to add a noise texture. Now press Shift plus Control plus the noise texture. When you see this gray noise thing, you know you did it the right way. Press Control plus T on the noise texture to enable the Node Wrangler. So this is how enable the Node Wrangler. Go to Edit, then Preference. Click Add On, then go to Search and type in Node Wrangler. Check the Node Wrangler, and here you go. Select the mapping. Press X to delete it. Then plug the object to the vector on the noise texture. Now change the scale to 4, and change the detail all the way up to 15. Now plug the fact to the roughness, then press Shift plus Control plus the principled BDSF, then change the transmission all the way up to 1, and then change the IOR to 1309. Add a color ramp 
and place it between the noise texture and principled BSDF. Then change the white value to 0.766 and change the black value to 0.416. Change the black color to hashtag 525252. Then add a bump node. Plug the fact to height on the bump node. Then plug the normal to the normal. Change the strength to 0.2. Select your color ramp. Press Shift plus D to duplicate, and then place it between the noise texture and the bump node. On the color ramp, we just duplicated change the gray value back to black. Then change the black value to 0.447. Change the white color to hashtag 666666. Now change the base color to full white. Select the noise texture. Press Shift plus Control plus D. That means we duplicate all the settings and not just the node even if we are going to change them a little bit, and then press Shift plus Control. Select the noise texture we just duplicated. Change the scale to 1, then change the roughness to 0.8. Select the bump node, and press Shift plus D to duplicate it, then place it just after the other bump node. On the second noise texture, plug the fact to the height on the bump number 2, and press Shift plus Control plus Principled BSDF. And on the bump 2, change the strength to 0.06. And your texture nodes will look like this, so you can pause and take a screenshot. And here we have a ice material. And now we are going to set up the scene stuff. Select both your ice cubes. By selecting one of them and then pressing Shift and the other object, press M to make a new collection and name it Ice Cubes. And press here to hide it from now. Press Shift plus A to add a curve circle. And press on this symbol to change the view. And select View Selected. Then add a cube. Press S plus 0.1 to scale it down. Then press G plus X plus minus 1 to move it to the left on the X axis. Make sure you have the cube selected. And go to Particles and press on the plus button to add Particles System. And rename it to Ice Cubes. Unfold the render. Change the render as to Collection and then change the instance collection to ice cubes and change the scale to 0.54. Select your curve circle, go to physics and click on force field and change type to curve guide. Now hit the space bar to play the animation to see this. It's too many ice cubes. So to change that, go back to particles. Then scroll up to emission and change the number to 40 or something. And if you want more ice cubes, make that number higher. Unfold the rotation. Then check the rotation and change the randomize to 1. Hit the space bar to play the animation. And this is what we have now. And if you want a bigger belt, scale the curve circle a little bit and the press control plus A to apply the scale. And if you want the ice cubes to circle around higher up, select the cube. Press S plus Z and scale it on the Z axis. Then press control plus A and apply the scale. Hit the space bar to play the animation, and this is what we have now. I changed the emission to 50 because I want more ice cubes. Now play the animation, and I think this looks good. So if you are using my free 3D model soda can, I'll show you how to import that model. Go to the file and click on append. Then find your downloaded file and click on that. Click on the object. Select the middle soda can and click on append. Press Option plus G to center the object on the 3D cursor. Press S plus 0 0.074 to scale it down. And press on this symbol to change the view. And select View Selected. Now play the animation. And if you are using your own model, make sure the scale is something like this. So now let's convert this to a mesh. Select the frame that you like. So go to that frame that you like. I selected frame 73. Then go to Modifier and click on Make Instances Real. Now you get all of these ice cubes individually, and now we can animate the ice cubes. But before that, press M to make a collection and rename it to Ice Cube Rotate. Hide the collection for now. Then select your cube and press X to delete it. And select the curve circle and delete that too. Then unhide your collection. Then hide your object, in my case the soda can and press Shift plus A to add any empty object. I select the cube 1, then press S plus 0.1 to scale it down. Go to the top view by pressing the 7 on your numpad. This is how you enable the numpad for laptops. Go to Edit and click on Preferences. 
Click on Input and check Enable NumPad. Right-click over the collection and click on Select Object, then press Shift, the empty object. Then press Ctrl plus P to make a parent to and click on the object. Now you can see the ice cubes are attached to the empty, so we can rotate the empty object on the Z rotation, then rename the empty object to Ice Controller. So make sure you have the empty cube selected and then go to frame 1. Press N to unhide the sidebar and right-click over the Z rotation and click on Single Keyframe. And this orange thing over here is a keyframe. Go to frame 20 and change the Z rotation to 102. Right-click and make a single keyframe. Then go to frame 100, change the Z rotation to 120, and right-click and make a single keyframe. And last, go to frame 120. Change Z rotation to 222 and right click and make a single keyframe. Then change the end frame to 120. Hit the space bar to play the animation. And this is what we have now. Open a new window by holding the pile until you get this symbol and then drag up. And then go to the graph editor by pressing this editor type. Press A to select all. Then press the home button. For Mac users like me, press FN Pile to the left to see all of the keyframes we had. You can now see on the graph that we just created a speed ramp. So what is a speed ramp? Speed ramping is when you gradually change the speed of a video clip. You can see speed ramping in countless action movies and sports videos when the action changes between slow motion, standard speed, and fast motion. And now we are going to set up the scene stuff. So first start with open a new window by dragging like this or right click and select header and then vertical split. On the new window, press one on your numpad to get to the front view. And then press shift plus A to add a camera and change the Y location to minus two. Then add an empty plane axis and press S.035 to scale the empty down a little. Select the camera, then press Shift plus the empty. Then press Ctrl plus P to parent the empty to the camera and click on the object. Then rename it to Camera Controller. Now the camera is connected to the empty. And on the left window, press 0 on your numpad to get to the camera view. Go to the camera settings and change the focal length to 125 millimeters and scale up your empty so the camera zooms out a little. Then unfold the viewport display. Change the pass part 2 to 1 so it's black around. Unfold the composition guide and check the thirds and the center. Unhide the soda can. Then change the X rotation to 18,2 and change Y rotation to 1,2 and last change Z rotation to 26. So select the camera controller and change the scale to 0.65. Now we are going to change the camera controller rotation. Change the X rotation to 11. Change the Y rotation to 4,7 and then last change Z rotation to 0, 1, 16. Click here and then click on random. For a more colorful viewport, hit the space bar to play the animation. And this is what we have now. Now we are going to animate the aperture. For you who are not familiar with cameras, the aperture is the focus of the camera. So it's switched from the can to the ice to the can again. So add another empty plane axis. Rename it to camera focus. So we know this is the camera focus. Then select the camera. Go to Camera Settings, check the depth of field, then change the focus object to the camera focus. So go to frame 1, change the f-stop to 1.2, then press I over the numbers to make a keyframe. Go to frame 20, press I over the numbers to make a keyframe, then go to frame 40, change the f-stop to 4.6, press I over the numbers to make a keyframe. And last, go to frame 100, change the f-stop back to 1.2, then press I over the numbers to make a keyframe. Select the frames 40 and 100, and then move it to 50 and 110. Hit the space bar to play the animation. And this is what we have now. I think this looks good, so let's move to the next part. And now we are going to animate the camera focus Y location. Go to frame 1. Select the camera focus. Change the Y location to 0 0.06, and right-click and make a single keyframe. Then go to frame 20. Right-click and make a single keyframe and then go to frame 40. Change Y location to 0 0.597 and right click and make a single keyframe. Go to frame 80. Change the Y location to 0 0.625. Right click and make a single keyframe. 
Last, go to frame 100. Change the Y location to 0.06 and right click and make a single keyframe. And here is my results. Thank you for watching and I hope you like my tutorial. Comment down below what I can make in the next video and with the editing and all that thing. And feel free to subscribe for more tutorials and videos.